Good, yourself? Oh, not too bad. It's been a busy few days, but uh, all's good. Well, so that's good. Busy is always good. Okay. Um, as a member of the Standing Committee and Environment and Sustainable Development, how can Canada boost zero emission vehicle production and enforce environment protection without taxing Canadians like into submission? Yeah, I think the the electric uh, or zero emission vehicle conversation is something we 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 just finished. I think it was about seven or eight meetings of focus just on that, uh, how, how to further electric vehicles in Canada. It's actually, it, it's interesting that what I learned was that the, we, we think about, you know, the, the, the big farm vehicles out in, in uh, the prairie provinces and how are you going to get those to, uh, to electric vehicles? We think about, uh, you know, driving across a country. We have a huge country. How are you going to sustain a charge? So there's lots of work being done on on batteries and you know, on the Apples and the Teslas of the, of the world are, are doing a lot of that work. But the uh, the biggest takeaway for me is that the majority of people actually charge their vehicles you know, at, at home overnight or at their their workplace. So finding where to get that uh, you know, that that buy in from uh, from the private sector to support that uh, that type of investment is is really what. Uh, but I don't want to, we haven't published a report yet. Don't want to give away a lot of the, the secrets from it uh, yet, but it's, uh, it was certainly a, a takeaway from, from that uh, component. There's a lots of work that can still be done. I think the government could do when it comes to things like, like batteries and, and whatnot, but uh, there certainly is a, an increasing appetite uh, that we saw in, in terms of, of zero emission vehicles and electric vehicles that uh, the Canadians would like to at least explore. Uh, the, a lot of the, the, um, subsidies that the, the, the federal government has provided up to this point uh, are really just it's it, it we've learned that they, they haven't hit the the amount where it's where people are looking at them as a, as a viable option where you know you, you think of the, the the high emission vehicles like the the you know a minivan or a, or a truck those aren't necessarily the, the viable options to to go and replace with a, an electric vehicle so I think you'll likely see some stuff in our election platform that'll hit on some of that uh, as well. But um, yeah, it's certainly a conversation I think a lot of Canadians are very interested in uh, going forward. Oh, outstanding. Um, okay, so switching gears here. So uh, what ways can Canada build closer ties with the UK? And uh, who could you see in the UK, like corporations or, or people that uh, would be allies uh, in, in the world um, and that we have it? It's a you know, it's a great question, especially with what's happened with Brexit. Uh, I think we're we're all aware and we're all eager to see what the next steps with uh, with the UK are. Uh, you know, I would have to give a, a good shout out to my to my very close and dear friend Andrew Percy. He's a member of Parliament in the UK, Conservative member of Parliament. Uh, he's uh, he's someone you should think about having on the show too. He's a huge fan of Canada. He'd love to be a Canadian citizen uh, as well, but uh, he's. He's somebody that I've had lots of uh, conversations with uh, uh, about Brexit and the the opportunities there are are for Canada. So when when the UK left the, the European Union, they they weren't allowed to negotiate or 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 be a part of any sort of trade agreement until that was essentially finalized. Uh, so in in some of the the initial steps that uh, that we took and our, our party took was the leader at the time, Andrew Shear, went over there to to grease the wheels, if you will, in terms of, you know, the, let's look at what these things, what these options could be in you know, our huge agriculture sector, uh, obviously the, you know, the trade and investment uh, technology uh, research that, that Canada does so well, that the UK does so well. I think there's a lot of opportunity to, uh, to build those ties uh, closer together and having a conservative government there with Boris Johnson, he's, he's a, a big fan of Canada as well. I think if we're able to win the next election that, you know, on the values basis, that adds a lot of uh, opportunity for us to, to continue those trades. There's the, the one issue that um, raised in Parliament just last week was the, uh, the UK pensioners uh, issue that, that there's a number of thousands of Canadians that are eligible for a UK pension that have worked in the UK. And, and what they're looking for is that aggregate agreement, reciprocal agreement with, with the United Kingdom Parliament. It was um, something that uh, they've been looking for for, uh, for a very long time. And to raise a question in, in Parliament, 
was similar to what happened in the, the UK Parliament, just the, the House of Lords, just the, a few weeks prior. So for both working on both of our ends, I think to, to further those conversations, it, it gives that collaborative approach uh, going forward.